Welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Jonathan Engelhart from Home Instead Senior Care. Um, there are several of these types of organizations now offering home care to senior citizens. Uh, what sets you apart, Jonathan? So we try to, dis- to set a new standard in the industry. Uh, one thing that we feel like uh, needs to be done is supporting our caregivers from an office side and also supporting our families. And it's hard to put a value on that for our families. When we talk to them and tell them that we offer support to our caregivers and our families um, and we tell them what that means, it's hard to, to see the, the value until you need that. So, for example, when our caregivers come out for the first time with a client, someone from the office staff who did the care consult with that client and their family will introduce the caregiver to them. I feel like it's a very stressful situation to come in unaware of what is to be expected of you. And you might have a simple care plan, but as someone who's there that knows the family, knows the client, is a familiar face to the family and the client, it creates a level level of comfort. And we can answer any questions that the caregiver may have, and we can also answer any questions that the client and the family may have, and we can alter the plan of care on the spot. So we can stay as little as 15 minutes or upwards of an hour if some of our clients have been with us for a long time because they're in a very set schedule. They are very regimented, and we want the caregivers to come in seamlessly. We don't want to have to have the client retrain our caregivers because some of our clients, uh, funny, it is kind of funny that they can stand up on their own, but they will let the caregiver put a little too much effort in picking them up if they will let them. So we want to make sure that they know the client can help and they're supposed to be getting better and going through rehab. But some of our clients have a a sense of humor and they know that (laughs) the the caregiver is new. So they'll try to pull little tricks on them. And (laughs) it's kind of funny and it's cute. But we want to make sure that they know the client and we give them a heads up beforehand of what to expect. And then also the the introduction with the caregiver. We really become children again, don't we? Mm -hmm. I know toddlers that pull that same trick. Yep. Um, It's also interesting, I think, that you, as a company, are very caring for your caregivers. You want Mm -hmm. to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so we, uh, I'm a strong advocate of uh, acknowledging what our caregivers do for our clients. They go above and beyond what the call of duty may be. And they bake goods for them. They do different things. They um, take them out and they do things with them. Uh, Some things that families never thought of being able to be done for their loved ones and Mm -hmm. our caregivers are doing it for them. And we recognize that. And we award them with different things. We give them gift baskets, uh, gift cards. We handed a... uh, uh, a bouquet of yellow roses to our caregiver the other day for a uh, caregiver recognition. And it's to it's called a Make a Difference Rose. And that was started from a corporate side by Paul and Lori Hogan. So the yellow rose represents something special done by a caregiver going above and beyond the call of duty and doing something very special and, you know, meaning a lot to our office and our clients. Mm. And that's what we strongly look for. I know someone listening right now is going, wow, are they hiring? Mm-hmm. So are you? We're always hiring compassion and caring caregivers. We're looking for people that truly have a passion to care for the elderly and make someone's life better and show them what it means to have someone that cares for them again, because a lot of our clients don't have family in town and they need a friend and they need someone to come in that they can trust and that they can build a relationship with and trust them. I, I, some of our clients have confided things in our caregivers that they wouldn't tell their own family. Wow. They trust them that much. So we're looking for caregivers all the time because uh, people in our community need um, people with very good morals to help them. Mm-hmm. What kind of training must a person have before they consider even applying? Mm-hmm. And then what kind of training do you provide for them? You mentioned Alzheimer's training. Mm-hmm. So we have uh, no real uh, requirement for training before. Um, we more look for a passion for caring for the elderly because um, the passion goes a long way. And that builds the fire of determination to want to learn how to care for the elderly. So a lot of our caregivers do a prior experience. We have uh, caregivers who come in that have an LPN or an STNA and they have worked in nursing homes or they've worked for other home health aid agencies and they come to us and those are the people that we can put out in the field a little faster because they do have prior training they have personal care experience Um, but when everybody comes in no matter what their background is they do go through our aging process training so we explain the uh, diseases that can present themselves as someone ages and also explain what it means uh, to have someone maybe decline if they are getting older. And we also go through building relationships. So we want to make sure that our caregivers know how to be um, a caring caregiver for our clients, to mm-hmm. give examples of what amazing things our caregivers have already done, um, and then 
the caregivers that don't have the personal care experience. We have um, our staff trains them in personal care experience because a lot of our hospice and Alzheimer's patients may need personal care. Um, That's just part of the disease or ailment of what they're going through. And then our Alzheimer's and dementia care or training uh, is something else that we offer to our caregivers. Uh, We want to make sure that all of our caregivers are trained in that because it's so prevalent in this area and that's what the majority of our clients are dealing with. So I really believe that all of our caregivers need that Mm -hmm. and we Mm -hmm. are well above uh, 50 percent right now with the caregivers that have that training and we're constantly bringing them in to give them that training um, so that we have a a good core of caregivers that can give care to anybody. Yeah that is a a sad but true statistic. We're speaking with Jonathan Engelhart from Home Instead Senior Care uh, offering uh, the people uh, the ability to stay in their home instead Mm -hmm. throughout their life. Um one item of concern would be to families, who are these people that we're allowing into our home to care for our treasured mother, father, grandparent? Uh, what kind of checks do you go through to make sure, because your reputation is on mm-hmm. the line Absolutely. as well, as you are hiring folks? Mm-hmm. So the caregivers are our face in the community, and we want to make sure that we're bringing in people that truly represent who we are, not only as a family, but also a business. So. Um, initially when someone applies, we do a phone screen with them. And in the phone screen, we're trying to find a passion or prior experience of caring for the elderly. And if we hear some good things from the phone interview, that brings us to the point of bringing them for a face-to-face interview. It's good. uh, It's easier to get a a good sense of character when you're talking to someone face-to-face. So you can understand a little bit about who they are, learn their personality, um, listen to some experiences they've had caring for the elderly or what really brings them to want to do this for people. And if we get a good sense from them, from a few of our office staff who have interviewed them, uh, we bring them in for training. And during the training, they are background checked through the court records. Um, We do fingerprinting, BCI and FBI, which is state and national checks. Mm -hmm. And then we also do drug screen checks as well. And Bureau of Motor Vehicle, because all of our caregivers are bonded and assured, and they're able to transport for our clients. Wow. Uh, Another thing that might be on people's minds is insurance. Mm -hmm. What will cover this? What won't? So we take uh, long-term care insurance Mm -hmm. and VA benefits currently. Um, Medicare and Medicaid doesn't cover the non-medical side of care. Um, That's something we wish that they could because a lot of families need this care desperately. Um, But we are private pay for the most part with a lot of our families. Um, that's why we do offer shifts as small as three hours once a week. Mm -hmm. Um, but some of our clients are 24 seven as well. Um, going to an assisted living or a nursing home, uh, many times you're paying out of pocket for that as well. And several times, or many of the times we're cheaper than uh, a facility may be. And you're at home and you have one-on-one care. So we're, uh, in a good, uh, position to be able to keep people at home and also, um, give them all the assistance that they need. Talk about your recession-proof business. <laughs> you really have come upon it because this is just going to be something that is needed mm-hmm. across the board by everyone. Um, it sounds to me like what you're providing is assisted living at home. That's essentially what we are doing. Um, I guess you would say assisted livings are maybe our main form of competition, but we even go into assisted livings to give help. Um, There's people who go into an assisted living, and they will only offer up so much assistance as it is. It's assisted living. So families will bring uh, a home health aid agency in to give 24-7 care in an assisted living. So that way their loved one doesn't have to go to the nursing home side. And many times a nursing home uh, will bring up the need to have a roommate. And a lot of people don't handle having a roommate. And they want to stay in their own room where they've been maybe for the last few years. So we even come in to give them help there, uh, Mm -hmm. simply because assisted livings don't have a ton of staff to give towards their their patients because they only need a small level of assistance. So if we can come in even a little bit to give them some extra bathing assistance or even help during mealtime, then that's what we're able to do for our families. We're talking about such a an important time of life when we're talking about end of life. It's Mm -hmm. a very sweet um, almost bittersweet time mm-hmm. because it's hard to say goodbye to these people, it but is. we really do want what's the very best for them. We don't want them to be imprisoned in old and sick bodies. Mm-hmm. Everybody, you know, for believers, you're really looking forward to what's next, mm-hmm. but it's still hard to say goodbye. Um, but you have found that 
there are some special moments with these people, have you not? Absolutely. Touch on that a little. Um, so I think that mainly comes with our hospice clients, simply because that's generally people going through end of life. And a few instances of being able to go in and say goodbye to somebody while they're on their deathbed and them thanking you for allowing them to complete the last wish they had in life, which was to stay at home with their family. Yeah. And to have someone thank you for that and to bring in some incredible people and, you know, be a friend to them in the last few days that they may have um, is incredibly rewarding. Mm -hmm. I, I can't think of many things that are more rewarding in life than to have someone appreciate what you're able to do for them in their last days. Not only that, but the support for the family um, and the love that they give you because you're helping out somebody in a very vulnerable position. And if you're able to bring in some very compassionate, very caring people to give care to somebody in that position, then uh, it's incredible. I, I feel very honored. I think it was so interesting before we went on the air talking about some of the things that uh, stick with even an Alzheimer's patient, namely um, scripture and songs. Mm -hmm. Those are in there and they're in there for good. Uh, what have you noticed? So we had one uh, client who was in an assisted living and the family, when I initially did the first care consult, asked for somebody who was of faith to come in and uh, to be with her. And I said, yeah, I, I think I can definitely be able to do that for you. So I brought in a caregiver and um, I always ask my caregivers how things are going and things were going well. And then about a week later, I asked her again how things were going. And she told me, she was like, you know what's amazing is they play the church music over her CD player and she sings along with it. And then my caregiver was telling me that she would sing along with it to her. So she would sing to her at night before she went mm -hmm. to bed. Um, because she knew all the church songs. And that was one of the few final things that stuck with her. And she would sing all the time, sing to her husband, and um, she would change up the words here and there, but it was still just very beautiful to hear her sing. And even at um, her older age, she still had a great voice. And mm. uh, that was the most vivid memory that she had was music, yeah. and especially her church music. Yeah, it was right there. How do we get a hold of you, Jonathan? So we are reached at 330-809-6444, uh, or you can go to homeinstead.com. Um, we are uh, in Maslin, Ohio. We cover Western Stark, Wayne County, and Tusk County as well. Um, we want to be able to help people in the communities around here. And if there's never any obligation for more information, I'm a strong believer that an informed decision is the right decision. So I want to make sure families have every bit of information available to them to make the right choice for their families. Awesome. Jonathan Engelhart, thanks so much for joining us in our community. Thank you.